Disney World opened in 1971, and the first day had 10,000 visitors. Today, there are 17 million people each year that visit Magic Kingdom alone. Um, my speech is going to be about having uh, what each park has to offer. And the first park I'm going to start off with is Magic Kingdom because it is the busiest park and the most well-known park of Disney World. And I'm only speaking about Disney World in Florida, not Disneyland or France or anything like that. Um, the first thing Magic Kingdom has that you should go and get fast passes for, in my opinion, would be um, Space Mountain, the Pirates of the Caribbean, and uh, Splash Mountain. That's just because those tend to be the busiest and you know, you definitely want to hit them, especially Space Mountain. Um, this is Tomorrowland. When you enter the park, the first thing you're probably going to go to is Tomorrowland because it's right there. Um, this has Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. It's a lot of fun. They have the Buzz Lightyear, which is an interactive thing where you're shooting, so that's fun for kids, and I like it too. Um, Walt Disney created a few rides that most people don't go on, but I feel you should because you learn stuff from it. And Walt created them, and he wanted like us to see them. Um, Carousel of Progress, it takes you through, starting in the 20s, I believe, and goes through different generations of what comes with like, TVs and radios and just different things that come about. Um, it's also, there's a lot of singing. And then the um, tram, the people mover. It takes you around the park and shows you different things, but it also explains how Walt Disney came up with getting to and from each park, or to and from around the park. Just the tram system that explains it. Fantasyland is a newer section of Magic Kingdom that opened. Um, one thing there is the Pascals, the Hidden Pascals from Tangled. Um, there's 10 hidden throughout the park, well, throughout that section, and good luck finding them because they're really hard. Um, the Bippity Boppity Boutique is in Fantasyland 2. If you have kids, you can pre-sign them up and they can go get dressed up like a Disney princess. If you don't have kids, you can just stop by any time and ask one of the people working there if you can make a wish. And you put your head down and they say a little chant thing and they sprinkle you with fairy dust and hopefully your wish comes true. Um, this is a new attraction that just opened this year. It's the Seven Snow White and Seven Dwarf Mine Rail. Um, I haven't been on it yet personally because, like I said, it opened this year. But if you do plan on going on it, you're going to need flash passes because it's going to be busy. The Philhar Magic, Mickey's Philhar Magic, is actually located on. No, that's still in Okay. Um, it's not a ride or anything, it's like a show. You get 3D glasses. But it takes you through Disney movies like Lion King and Aladdin, and um, it's interactive. They spray scents at you and water at you. So if you have kids or if you like Disney movies, you should definitely definitely go see that. Liberty Square, there's the Haunted Mansion ride. Doesn't tend to be too busy anymore. And um, there's a ring hidden in the ground somewhere. I haven't found it yet, but there is a ring hidden in the ground to do with the, the wife, the uh, wife who's going to get married or whatever. She threw it because her husband died. She threw it out the window and it impaled in, in the ground. So they say it's by the pet cemetery there. I haven't found it yet though. Um, Adventureland has the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You can also get dressed up like a pirate if you're a kid. So that's fun. Um, some restaurants you should hit if you're at Magic Kingdom. My personal reference would be Tony's Town Square Restaurant. There's a little thing on the ground that has hearts and then it has Lady and the Tramp paw prints in it, so that's really cute, and if you're on a date or anything, you should go there. For kids, the Crystal Palace is great, it's a buffet, and you get to meet the characters. Um, their show at the end would be the Wishes Nighttime Spectacular. It's a pretty good fireworks show, and they also have different parades, and um, Mickey's Dream Along with Mickey, they have the Dream Along with Mickey show, so that's fun. The next park is Animal Kingdom. Um, if you're going to go get flash passes for anything, I would go with the Cali River Rapids, Thunder Mountain Railroad, or um, Expedition Everest. Those are also the busiest, and they're the main rides there. This is the Wonder Flights of Wonder show. They have a bunch of trained birds and rats and different animals.
animals that go through and do a show for you. So if you're into animals and seeing stuff like that, I would go to that. The Maharaja Trail, um, again, the Jungle Trek, the Maharaja Jungle Trek, I would go to if you like animals. This is the Festival of the Lion King. Um, it's a show. It's a lot of fun. If you like the Lion King, I would go to it. I saw it like three times the first time I went to Animal Kingdom because I thought it was that great. Then they have the Nemo show, which is made out of puppets. It's actually people carrying around puppets. That's also a really good show, and it's musical. Again, I went and saw it like two or three times the first time. But. Hollywood Studios is next. It previously was known as MGM Studios. The flash passes would be for um, Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror. Those are the main rides there. Rock and Roller Coaster is actually the one of the fastest roller coasters at Disney. Um, the American Idol Experience, if you enjoy singing or enjoy watching singing, if you get there early, you can actually audition to be a part of this. You have to be 15, and the winner gets an automatic pass to perform for the director of American Idol as a chance to be on the show. And uh, if you don't want an actual audition, you can just watch the show and vote. The Beauty and the Beast show, it's musical, and it goes through the story of Beauty and the Beast. Um, that's another Toy Story ride that they have, and again, it's interactive. I actually think this one's a little bit better. It's a little bit more fun. It's kind of like a carnival ride, like a carnival shooting game, whereas the other one was more like, I don't know, like a laser shooting game. This would be one of the shows that they have, and it is called The Lights, Camera, Action. Um, it's cheesy, but kids tend to like it a lot. There's a lot of like fast-paced cars going. Adults kind of catch on to it a little bit more, but it's still a fun show to see. And you get an appearance from uh, Lightning Queen. They have Fantasmic as their fireworks show, and it's a really good show, honestly. There's a dragon that comes, has all the Disney characters. It's really good. If you're there, you should see it. I forgot to mention, but Animal Kingdom does not have a fireworks show due to the animals. And they close early. That's the dragon. Epcot is my favorite park out of all of them. Um, Mission Space would be the one I recommend getting a fast pass for. Um, this is a uh, the oh my gosh I, I just randomly can't remember the name. Uh, they're soaring too. That's a ride where you go through and they test track. That's what it is. Test track. They do the like how to be on like the cars, how they test out cars, being on bumpy roads, being on like quick stops and stuff like that. Um, then they're soaring. You go through a parasail throughout the world and different things, and it's 4D. They spray stuff at you. Um, if you go to the Coca Cola shop there, you get to try all the different sodas. Um, they're really good. My favorite's like the Japan. The Italy one's really gross. Tastes like alcohol, but there's no alcohol in it. Um, they also have an emo ride there that goes through an emo story, and at the end, uh, you can see some like fish and stuff. And then they have the Living with the Land show, which you go through and you see how um, different plants be are grown and stuff. Um, they actually use those plants to feed people at Epcot. And you can go to Japan and pick out an oyster, and they cut it open for you, and you get the pearl that's inside. They have the candlelight processional during Christmas, and then they have the food and wine festival. Um, I've performed in the candlelight processional quite a few times, so that's a lot of fun. There's a guest narrator. That year, there was new Patrick Harris. And then their fireworks show is Illuminations. Um, they take a globe, and they bring it out, and it's an awesome fireworks show. So that's one of my favorite parts, because the fireworks. Um, when you go, don't forget to look for the hidden Mickeys and grab your lanyards. You can buy little pins and trade them with anyone, any of the workers at the park. So you can buy like a $10 pin, but find a $50 pin on the worker and trade it. That's it.